This year I turned 70 and I decided last year that I would give myself an exhibition, a kind of a retrospective exhibition for my 70th birthday present. What I wanted to do with the exhibition was to look back over my arts practice over the last 40 or more years. I started off in ceramics. I did my training in 1976 at Canberra School of Art and started exhibiting not long after. I continued to exhibit work, make production work, and towards the end of my ceramic career, I did quite a lot of public art commissions, private commissions, mostly in the field of mosaics and hand-painted tile. I lectured at both TAFE and uni in the ceramics departments there, and I taught at high school level in visual arts. During my high school teaching time, which is about eight or nine years, I kind of got edged into the field of photography. I had had some darkroom practice with my original uh, Bachelor of Arts Visual Arts degree at Newcastle University. And so I kind of got nudged into the area of working in the darkroom with students. And as digital became more prominent, we started working with digital images as well. In 2010, I had the first of three brain bleeds that I've had and was unable to continue teaching full time. 2020 and 2021, I had brain bleeds on both occasions and that has slowed me down quite a bit. When I decided to do the exhibition, which I called Building Bridges, and the reason for that naming was that I was trying to build a bridge between my ceramic practice and my photography and video practice. I knew that it would be difficult given that I had some ongoing problems from having had three brain bleeds, but I wanted to do it to prove to myself that I could still do this sort of thing and it would give people a bit of an idea of what I'd been up to in my creative practices. A lot of the younger people are around Newcastle in the art scene never knew that I was a ceramist. I stopped doing ceramics in 2001. So it was a good chance for me to show what I had been involved in and what I was now involved in. The vehicle for that was to do still lives with pottery vases full of flowers. Each of the vases has some connection with my ceramic journey. The first one was a Spanish, little Spanish Maolca vase that my mother brought back. My mother was also a potter. She brought it back from Spain because she knew that I was interested in Maolica, that I loved that technique. The second one was a vase by my mother. The next two were vases by myself, one a stoneware one, one an earthenware one. The remaining ones were, the connections were to do with friendship and people that had intersection with my ceramic career, with their own ceramic career. Sue Stewart and I have had almost parallel careers. We both went to uni to do a, our BA VA after we had been potting for some time. We both ended up teaching at both uni and TAFE in the ceramic sections. And funnily enough, we both did our dip eds to do teaching at the same time. And during that time too, as potter, I was actually involved with the Newcastle Studio Potters. I was president for some time. And Sue has had a big involvement with the Studio Potters. So our careers and our social paths have, have, have been almost parallel. We're still good friends today. Sean and Michelle I've known for some time. Michelle I've known for longer than Sean. But both were potters. Michelle had to stop potting when she had to have a hip replacement at age 40. Sean and I shared a studio for some time in Adamstown and we've been friends all the way through. 
Bruce Pryor started off with the pottery out at Martinsville. I used to go out there and see him. He had a huge two-chamber wood-fired kiln out there. And sometimes we would go out and fire. And Bruce would come into social events that we had in it in Newcastle. Bruce moved down to the Southern Highlands and I visited him there a couple of times. The last Deminch, I don't really know the potter, I know of her and I think I have met her once, but it's more to do with where I bought the pot. I bought it from an old friend, a gallery director that owned the gallery in Manly that I showed at and sold work to, Jan Carras. Another piece that was in the exhibition, well, it's actually two pieces, but kind of shown as one, was a sculpture by my friend Ron Royce. Ron is a sculptor who excels at doing figurative ceramic works and especially seems to be able to really capture older people and their body shapes, their expressions, the way you hold your body really, really well. I had asked Ron would he do a piece for the exhibition. We've been really good friends for uh, quite a while now after a chance meeting up at Maitland Regional Gallery. We have uh, some similarities. He's also had a major brain injury and interested in ceramics so we had that straight away as common ground and we've found lots of other common ground in the meantime. Ron decided to do a sculpture of me feeding a magpie. While I've been living at this house I've had a number of families of magpies that have come and they'll quite often feed from my hand and sometimes they'll get up on my knee if I'm sitting out in the backyard. I gave Ron some photos for reference. He came and took some photos for reference, walked around me taking photos to get all the angles right, get the body shape right at the back, side, front, and he made this lovely sculpture for me. Because it was ceramics and it was going to be on a bit of a timeline, he decided he'd better make two of them, just in case something happened to one of them. And something did happen to one of them. So we have one that is complete and whole and one that is broken. But I decided I would show them both because it seemed to me to be a pretty good metaphor for how things have been over the last little while for me. So the whole one is really good showing that aspect of it. The friendship with these birds has been something that has been given me a great deal of comfort. The broken one is more of a metaphor for how I've been just particularly just recently. I've had a lot of trouble with cognitive fatigue from the brain injuries and that has kind of been getting worse unfortunately to the point that sometimes I can't talk, I can't, I can't walk, I can't understand what people are saying etc. That has then been compounded by in January my sister was quite ill. She had been diagnosed in December with a cancer, a tumour, uterine tumour. She got quite ill in January and passed away towards the end of January. So those things combined are the broken me. I'm slightly broken at the moment. Many, many people commented on just how, how accurate a picture of me these two sculptures were. So thanks, Ron. There are also four TVs in the exhibition, two on walls and two on rolling stands. What I prepared for those was a series of slideshows and show reels. One of them has my ceramics, so it's just a slideshow of still images that go through my career. One is images from the drawing room and I felt that was important because A, I really like the images. They're some of the best images I feel that I've taken in my photography career. And they were a major part in allowing me to get to where I am now with my photography. Another screen has images of street photography. 
I walk up to the shops nearby, a couple of blocks, 10 minute walk, almost every day. And I take my camera with me, just looking out for interesting things. Interesting might be because of colour, it might be because of the people doing something interesting, might be lots and lots of people have their dogs with them and they are always interesting. Sometimes it's just a, see a special car or a bird or something along those lines and I'll take photos. Often when I get back I might take 20 or 30 photos. When I get back and look through them I might discard most of them. I might just keep one or two that to me tell an interesting story or you could make up an interesting narrative around that 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 photo. The last screen is a series of show reels. So I have clips there of video that I've shot that are to do with the artist interviews. Some will be art events that I've shot. Some will be music events that I've shot. I included three pieces of my own work that were representative of three of the themes that I worked with for exhibition ceramics. Throne work with Maalika, fairly heavily illustrated, use of gold and mother of pearl lustres was one, and a shallow, I used a shallow bowl for that. There was a series I called my Baroque series that were very ornate, thrown pieces and then added pieces to them, hand built, cut pieces out, really made them over the top ornate. And again, a lot of use of gold lustre, gold and platinum. They were a reaction to the 80s. That's when they were made in the 80s. And it was the time of greed is good, opulence, over the top, everything was a little bit decadent. The other series was a sculptural series and they were based on my observations of Newcastle Harbour. I had worked at the dockyard in early days before I even started with ceramics or anything and just observed ships coming in and out and their cargoes and it always struck me as a little bit odd in some ways that here we are we think we're such a sophisticated society, civilization put people up on the moon, we've got computers, we've got everything happening. But we still trade in the really basic commodities, food, shelter. We have defence forces that are based on water and the air, of course. And so the, the sculptural pieces represented that. And they were done in an assemblage. Objects, uh, ships in them, they would have objects that may be being traded. One had a loaf of bread and wheat silos with the columns. One had a trawler and a big fish. Uh, one, the one that I put in the exhibition was called Give Me Shelter and it was a factory that produced I-beams and a ship sitting on top of it. I decided quite early that I wanted the images to be of reasonable size and next to them on a floating shelf would be the work that was in the photo. The works are all in my collection. I had drawn up a plan of how I wanted the exhibition in the space. I'd got the floor plan is available from the gallery. So I'd measured it out and done all the things with the sizes of the proposed prints and frame, framed prints. And I knew the size of the shelves. I knew where I wanted each one of them to go. That's all very fine, but when it comes down to, I had it all planned out on paper, I'd printed it out and took it in. Very lucky, lucky at the Creator Incubator, they have one of their resident artists, Marlene Houston, is also a professional gallery installer. And so she does some of the time installing exhibitions in the little gallery where I had the show. And it was her professionalism, her precision, her attention to detail that made the show look so good. I know that if it had been left to me, measurements would be out, some of the pictures would be crooked, some of the 
shelves would be at different heights, all that sort of thing. But Marlene made it all happen beautifully. And one of the things that was commented on a lot at both the opening and during the opening hours and online, as I posted images online, was that the presentation was excellent. And I was really, really happy. I was happy with the prints and the framing, but I was ex especially happy with the presentation, the way it looked in the gallery. Overall, to me, the exhibition was a success. It did what I set out to do. It chronicled my journey through ceramics and then photography and video. I was pleased with the images that I'd made. I was pleased with how they printed. The colour and the texture it was a beautiful satin paper. The framing worked really well. They were behind art glass, so there was very little reflection. And in some ways, it's almost like it gave it a little bit more depth. The opening went very well. There was quite a lot of people there. There was people that I hadn't seen. Some of them I hadn't seen for 40 years. People travelled up from Melbourne. People travelled down from the New England Plateau. There were people from all sorts of different areas of, of my life that were there. And the same during the, the open days of the exhibition. Quite good crowds coming through. And people coming through from uni days, from my teaching days, from even the brain injury service that I went to for the, my case manager from 2021 came along. Would I do it again? Possibly not. It took a lot of resources, cognitive, emotional and financial. This was the first time I'd ever exhibited framed photographs and only the second time that I'd exhibited photographs in a kind of a solo show. Sue Stewart and I had a show together in 2012. She showed ceramics, I showed photographs. And that was the last time before this show that I had shown anything. So maybe in another 12 years, who knows. I'll leave you with some images from the exhibition.